It is hot out today, but I am glad that I'm outside right now. So I'm currently at a really interesting crossroads with YouTube stuff. I'm realizing that the side of YouTube that I seem to value most in my heart, which is people sharing raw, authentic feelings, just the connection with humanity we are able to achieve in some slight way through YouTube. I am not naturally inclined to creating that sort of content. Even in normal life, I struggle to get my thoughts out in one clear, cohesive sentence on the first try, and then repeating things just, it, it makes you sound less authentic when you're talking to the camera, right? As much as I would like to be, I don't think I am a natural orator. <laughs> Nor do I know if the personality I am able to present to camera is one that people will naturally connect with or want to see more of. I think part of my problem in this, and I've talked about it before, is a very strange, very unique to me sort of problem I have. <laughs> For most of my life, my responses to things have been what I thought other people wanted of me, or what, or what I thought the social script of what would be expected of me specifically was. Like in high school, I would be excited and bombastic about things because my friends were like, well, Heather would do that. Like, she, she would be brave enough to try this thing or do this thing. Even if it was like, I was like, I don't know, <laughs> inherently, I don't, I don't really want to do this either. But like, for you guys, I will. One of us needs to do it. Or just like in general in life, I would say things with less nuance than I would think like those subjects would have because it, it just seemed like the thing to do. And I think a lot of that still overlaps into my subconscious way of acting because when you run on a script for so long, it's really hard to, to write a new one, you know? And I think that comes across on camera. Or maybe it's a thing only I see, but I... I think people can sense that inauthenticity, when it's not me intentionally being inauthentic, it's just for so long I didn't know how to express my, <laughs> what's actually inside me. I was, I was just running on a script. And right now this is kind of coming to a head in my internal mental thoughts and planning, because there's the side of me that wants to be really incredible. There's the side of me that wants to do like fantastic filmmaking, like with in clear intention and planned out shots and beautifully framed pictures and using movement and framing and just storytelling techniques really well. Like, I want to find a part of my life I can do that in. It's part of the reason I taught myself so much about filmmaking, quote unquote, but I never actually I'm realizing I never actually utilize those skills for my personal projects. And I think part of that problem is because YouTube exists in so many different ways in my brain. Like, I love the raw authenticity I've seen and see from other people, and I see so much value in sharing of yourself online in that way, and I want to be part of that. But then I've been, like, intentionally... Oh man, have I had a bugger in my nose this whole time? But then I've been like intentionally curating my filmmaking skills to be like on a much higher polished level. And you can't do, at least I don't know how to do that like high level filmmaking alongside of the authenticity that, that I really want to be able to express. I feel like I'm just as bad at making an engaging vlog as I am at making <laughs> like some sort of polished short film or something. Because I don't know how to do either. I've made attempts at vlogs, 
but all of my big dramatic ideas for YouTube videos never get made because for so long YouTube was just a hobby and I wasn't actually putting real effort into it because that's scary and you might get things wrong. So I guess I've I've at least taken the correct step forward at this point. I've allowed myself the space within me to try, so at least my mental b cogs are turning a little bit in the correct direction. So I guess the current thing I need to figure out is the practical side of things. What process do I use to make something more complicated come to life? And what process do I use to create a vlog? What is the daily step-by-step -step or manic spend two days straight, whichever ends up being the right way for me to do things, what does that look like for me? What stories do I want to tell and how do I tell them? How do I edit those videos so people will continue to watch? The YouTube says that like your audience retention graph for your for videos should like be 60 to 70 percent like ideally. I have never had a video that has that high of audience retention. Like the most recent one I think is like 20. I was really hoping that one was going to have a higher one because of the talking through. I would hope it would engage people and they would want to stay through for more. But it didn't, so we're gonna keep trying. I did get one comment that said it was really, like, it was really encouraging to them as a fellow, like, hobbyist mermaid. And that made my heart really, really happy. I was really glad I was able to, like, actually touch someone in an important way with that video. So I guess even if it didn't do what I was hoping <laughs> with the analytics side of things, at least there was some human connection there. I care about the human connection a lot. <laughs> and then even at this tiny channel size, it's so hard to fight with the algorithm. Cause there's the part of my brain that knows that videos with like mermaid videos will do the best right now. Cause I think that's where most of my shorts audience has come from. Like those are really cool videos. And like me talking about things videos will not do well because you know, that's, that's not how people found me. So why? Why would I expect people to want to watch that sort of things when, like, they haven't gotten the chance to get to know me? Like, we haven't built up this parasocial relationship yet. And I don't know how much value I have presented as, like, yes, this is something worthy of spending your time on. That's the other thing that really bounces around in my brain. Because some social media is very bad for me, and some I really appreciate and is very good for me. And I want to make sure my stuff falls into the benefit to others category, not just the distract you away from the real world category. Don't get me wrong, there is a time and place for distractions and sometimes we need them just to keep our heads above water, but I don't think nearly as much <laughs> as we currently have in our American culture. If you have any words of wisdom or ways you can relate, I really do appreciate those authentic connections we're able to have over the internet. I know they're not, they're not the same as something you're going to get with your friends in real life, but I really do think there is value to us supporting each other digitally across the continent. I'm still figuring this out. That's what I've been pondering on right now. But a genuine, a genuine thank you to those of you who have been coming along for it, those who just joined. Yeah. I don't know. I love you guys.